Hey, I'm Max from the Arkells, and this is Records in My Life. Good. so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. How are you today? Pretty good. It's, it's a beautiful day in Vancouver. I know we're inside, but I was just outside for a little jog, and it was spectacular. Yeah, That's compared to healthy. the rest of the country, too. Did you go for a jog? That's pretty healthy, healthy rock style. Yeah, the older you get, the more you kind of got to do it, unfortunately. Fantastic. Yeah. So as you know, this show is called Records in My Life, and mm -hmm. it's, we educate people about new music and stuff, although your album isn't brand new. Give us, tell us a bit about the backstory of it. Yeah, the record uh, came out uh, in October, and uh, we're in February now, and uh, we made the record kind of between touring. Uh, we tour pretty heavily, and uh, for us, it was sort of exciting to go into the studio for maybe four or five days at a time and uh, take a little break and then go tour some more and then come back and forth. I like kind of being able to jump back and forth between the studio and the road. And um, yeah, after about nine months of that, we turned around and we had a record. And what's the name of the oh, record? Oh, so the record's called Rally Cry. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're really excited about it. 10 songs, you know, I think the production is direct and to the point and uh, it's been fun playing the songs live, especially. Did you guys self-produce or did you work with anybody? Yeah, we worked with um, an old friend, Eric Ratz. Um, he produced uh, a couple songs on our third record, High Noon, and helped pr and produced uh, Knocking at the Door. And uh, for us, a good producer is a bit of a social worker. He's a very good listener. Hmm. He's a very patient person. He can speak every language of each musician. So when I'm going, hey, Tim, I need the drums to go, Lambuda, <laughs> he'll be like, what he really means is this. And Tim goes, oh, OK. Yeah, so he's a bit of a translator. Okay. Yeah, That's great. And you, I mean, you're a rock star, musician, um, but you also have a, you have a degree in political science. So yeah. you're, so the, which leads into the question, what's a good record? I mean, we live in pretty turbulent times. What's a good album now, a protest record, or just to educate the people? To you know, I think um, Connor Oberst uh, has written some of the best political songs of the last, you know, 10, 20 years. Um, he has a song, which I don't even know if he ever recorded it properly in a studio, but he performed it on a late night show. This would have been back during the Bush era. And it's, it's called When the President Talks to God. And it's uh, a really vicious uh, sort of takedown of, of George Bush. Uh, and so, and, and, he, and he talks about, uh, you know, politics and there's a lot of social commentary in a lot, all of his music. Uh, so I, I look to him because he's, he's pretty amazing at writing political songs. And you guys are sports fans. I mean, you've yep. done stuff with hockey, mm -hmm. and I think you did uh, you did something with the NFL. And yeah, we, we've had our song, song placed in a number of sports-related things. Yeah, right, right. So what's a what's a good song for? You know, the home the home team is down four one. I know we're in Canada, so we got to talk mm -hmm. a bit about hockey, even yeah. though it's a global show. So what's a good song to amp up the team and the crowd to get back into it? What's a not a song, but a song or an album? Well, I think uh, I'm a bit of a sports fan, and I'm going to be a bit of a sports psychologist here. Because <laughs> if, if your team is down 4-1, everybody's uptight in the whole stadium. Right. Everybody in the team is uptight. Everyone in the crowd is uptight. I think you need to throw a bit of a party. So any song that kind of loosens people up, I think, is the move. So we could do, like, uh, Ride With Me by Nelly uh, or <laughs> No Problem good. by Chance the Rapper. You know, like, just something that's a little more uplifting and just puts you in a good mood. Because I think... When your team is down, the only thing you can offer is, uh, you know, your good spirit. And hockey players like, they seem to gravitate. Do you know what they, why that is? But they, a lot of hockey players like, we were talking about this earlier, but they like hip hop and they like kind of DJ, like EDM stuff sure. like that. Is that what it is? Like the movement and the beats, they can get amped? To the yeah, I think there's shows? something to that. I mean, the, the younger people, generally speaking, I think gravitate towards, um, you know, EDM and pop or electronic and hip hop. Um, Though I'll say uh, there are some NHLers that are big Arkells fans, and and over right. the years, um, you know, um, actually at our show in Edmonton two days ago, Connor McDavid was there and Donnell nice. Nurse, and I got text from them afterward. Connor McDavid is a big uh, Tony fan, who's our piano player. He was standing right next to Tony during the show, watching. That's pretty cool. And Tony's a very expressive performer, and uh, Darnell Nurse texted me and said Connor's Tony's newest biggest fan. 
That's great. Yeah. Don't they have a bat? Like I read, I read on this thing on this sports. Thing. Oh yeah, the, the the Maple Leafs have a bit of a bat. Yeah. Isn't yeah. Isn't, isn't Connor involved in? No, the, I think Austin Matthews with the Leafs is is picking up the drums. Okay. okay. Yeah, and 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 they're jamming some stuff. Uh, yeah, I've okay. heard that. Actually, the Leafs uh, GM. Uh, Kyle Dubas is a friend of ours. So oh, nice. uh, when and he's got and he's been by the studio and he's hung out with us. He's a big music fan. Okay, big Springsteen fan actually. Too. I can't. I, that Springsteen we love. I can't trash talk the Leafs though because it's you know, your yeah, all yeah. due respect. <laughs> but um, let's talk about Motown a little bit. I know mm-hmm. you've done um, some Motown kind of cover shows and and things like that. Just like off the cuff. Um, what's give us a couple of great Motown albums that have inspired you? Yeah. So my dad. Um, went to Wayne State University, which is in downtown Detroit in the wow. late 60s. And he was a, a DJ at the college radio station. Wow. So he trucked around these Motown records for the rest of his life. Right. And as a kid, I listened to them. And uh, so I love, I, I, th- I think more about just kind of the singles, um, you know, Smokey Robinson, uh, Tracks of My Tears. That's one of the most beautiful songs of all time. Um, yeah, you know, The Temptations, uh, you know, I Wish It Would Rain, that's a great song. Obviously, uh, Stevie Wonder's material is amazing, The Supremes, uh, The Four Tops. Um, yeah, but if I had to choose one, I think, yeah, I think it would probably be, no, actually, you know what? I love um, Can't Get Next to You by The Temptations, you know that song? Yeah, great yeah. song. So anyway, yeah, there, there's too many to choose from, really. And give us something new that you've discovered new to you, meaning it could be an older release. Oh, yeah, <clears throat> or, brand, or brand spank new, a young band. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there's so much uh, good music out there. Um, yeah, I know, I know she was on the show, Phoebe Bridgers, though. I, I discovered her record, Strangers in the Alps, um, like recently. And I know that the, the record came out in 2017, I think, or 2018. So it's not a brand new record, but for me, I've listened to that a lot. Um, Motion Sickness, that song is so great. Um, and the Boy Genius Project is wicked, and the new uh, project she has with Connor Oberst, right? Better Oblivion Community Center is great. So um, I, uh, yeah, love the sound of her voice. I love her lyrics. Um, yeah, I, I've never seen her live though, so I'm excited for that. Let's do one last one. Thanks again. Let's do a school of rock question. Mm-hmm. Like to ask, you just got a job. Since you have a university degree, you got, you got a job teaching school school kids music. Mm. So what uh, what album do you send them home with to listen to, to either? As a social statement, or as a, or as a musical statement. Wow, that's a good question. I mean, it'd have to be a Beatles record, uh, and then choosing the Beatles record is the, is really the question. Which is the Beatles record you want to send them home with? Uh, I say, I say Abbey Road. Uh, I think there's a good collection of songs there. Uh, it's it's mature music, but there's also some sort of whimsical moments in it. The medley on the back half of that record is spectacular. Um, though I'll say my fa- the first record I ever heard was Help, because that was the that was uh, my favorite movie as a kid. Uh, my dad showed me help when I was like four years old, and I watched that movie countless times. Yeah. What a cool dad. Yeah, he's here actually. He, he, he's oh, really? Hang, yeah, he, he, he's come on the tour. He was in Edmonton. Oh, he's on tour with him? Well, normally ne- he's never on tour with us, but, he, but he, he's sort of semi retired. So he's like, Can I come? And I was like, Sure. And he's like, Sweet. That's really nice. <laughs> yeah. He's trying, to, he's trying to look out for you. It's a good, good dad. Yeah, no, he's, I think he's just sort of like fascinated by the whole thing. Yeah, he, he's enjoying himself. And thank you. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. I just like to ask, and I've said that three times, but we like to ask words of wisdom from our guests, mm. a joke or advice for our audience. Words of wisdom. You know, just try to live in the moment, man. Just try to try your best to enjoy beauty around us. That's well nice. said. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. We got gas in the tank to go all night. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe. And if you're really feeling it, please hit us up on Patreon. Cheers.